Hello and welcome to the interview here on France 24. Our guest is Lu Shai. He is the ambassador of the People's Republic of China in France. Thank you very much for being with us, Mr. Ambassador. Good afternoon. We're less than three weeks away from the Winter Olympics, which will be held in Beijing. And uh, there is obviously a concern, just like in the whole world, but especially now in Beijing, the concern over the COVID pandemic. This Monday, the number of cases reached its highest level in China since March 2020, with 223 cases. In addition, the Omicron variant is present in Beijing. So let me ask you, are the Olympic Games threatened by a resurgence of the pandemic? China is now fully ready to host the athletes for the games from all of the largest countries in the world and is ready to provide a wonderful Winter Olympics 2022. Regarding the epidemic, it is true that recently China has had a number of cases in a sporadic way. But if you compare this to the international situation, the situation as it is in China right now, as regarding COVID, is very much under control. A hundred or so, 200 cases is not very much in the grand scheme of things. We've already got a lot of experience in controlling the pandemic. However, we saw lockdowns enforced in whole cities like Xi'an, for instance, uh, without many cases. So is there a possibility that Beijing, if there is an upsurge due to arrival of athletes and delegations or local contamination, could this be considered as an option? For the Winter Olympic Games, on the Chinese side, as part of our partnership with the International Olympic Committee, has implemented a number of preventative measures for COVID. The Olympic sites will be completely isolated during the Games, and the logistics and medical teams are already working to implement this. As regarding Xi'an, yes, we did a partial lockdown that was necessary. It was required to stop the spread of the virus, and we saw results only a few days after the lockdown. The number of cases of people contaminated dropped very quickly. So could such a lockdown be put in place in Beijing during the game if it happens, or is it completely ruled out? It depends. I think that at least for the time being in Beijing, we don't have many cases. There were a couple of cases just a few days ago, but everything is being clearly identified and the appropriate measures are being taken. So there's no need to worry. I am sure that during the Olympic Games time, there will be no issues related to the COVID pandemic in Beijing. Let's switch to diplomacy now. Several countries, the United States, Canada, Australia, and now Denmark, have decided a diplomatic boycott to protest against the human rights violations, especially in the Xinjiang region. Are you worried that other countries will join this diplomatic boycott or you simply don't care? The Olympic Games are an event that's organized for the athletes themselves. For the sports men and women from around the world, we don't organize the Games for politicians. Whether some politicians come or not actually doesn't make much of a difference for the Games themselves. In fact, their excuse, supposed issues in Xinjiang, is a complete lie. What if athletes uh, publicly advocate for Xinjiang or Tibet? What will be the reaction of Beijing? We have the International Olympic Committee's rules. On the Olympic Games venues, we need to maintain political neutrality. I'd like to speak about the situation in the region and particularly with Taiwan. Taiwan's foreign minister just told us a few days ago, I quote him, the military threat from Beijing is very serious. 
In addition, the Chinese president just declared that he fears the catastrophic consequences of a global confrontation. So, Mr. Ambassador, are we getting dangerously close to a war? First of all, I would like to clarify something. Taiwan is a full part of Chinese territory, so there's no Minister for Foreign Affairs in Taiwan. And what the gentleman is saying is completely wrong and unfounded. But it's not so much an issue of armed reunification. The issue at play here is what the Taiwanese authorities, the Taiwanese separatists, and they must not be able to increase the tension related to the situation in the Taiwan Strait. So are you saying they are the ones multiplying provocation because they in turn say that you are clearly saying you want peaceful reunification but that you're in fact preparing for war and this is why you need the support of allies, especially the United States? The reunification of the territory is what all of the Chinese people aspire to, including the people who live in Taiwan. Taiwan is fully part of the Chinese territory since ancient times. In China, we have a law to prevent the separation of countries. So, if the authorities in Taiwan were to continue their provocation to increase tensions in the region, then the Chinese government will, how can I put this, will bring the relevant response. And the United States do not have a positive role to play in this process. It is in fact because of the support of the American authorities that the Taiwanese people are moving in this direction of so-called independence. Let me clarify this. When you say China will take all relevant measures, does that include a military option, uh, if you deem it necessary, or are you saying no, your reunification will be peaceful under any circumstances? Uh, main method is peaceful reunification. And in fact, you would have seen that the Chinese government is implementing a lot of measures to promote cooperation, economical, and other sorts of cooperation in the region around the strait. This serves to serve the people who live in Taiwan. But we cannot let Taiwan separate from the country. So we have not ruled out the use of force. But it would not be used against the people of Taiwan, it would be used to dissuade the separatists in Taiwan and some foreign powers. Taiwan recently opened an office in Lithuania inside the European Union, which bears the name of Taiwan instead of the usual Taipei. After that, China downgraded its diplomatic relations with Lithuania. In turn, the EU accuses you of having taken retaliatory measures against Lithuania. However, China did not go as far as breaking relations with Lithuania. Is it because you're afraid of what this could trigger vis-à-vis the European Union? Well, the European Union observes the one China policy when it comes to China. The situation in Lithuania goes against the common policy being applied by the European Union. In this, Lithuania has created issues for the European Union. 
The Chinese government has brought the relevant reactions to bear because we must make sure that the One China policy is respected by all countries that have diplomatic relations with us. China has simply downgraded the diplomatic relations with Lithuania. We haven't broken them completely. Are you afraid of the European reaction? It's not so much out of fear. We simply wished to state our clear position against against this endangerment of the One China policy. That being said, China still sees Lithuania, the people of Lithuania, as our friends. And we hope that the Lithuanian government will be able to correct their mistake and come back to the correct position on this issue. Mr. Ambassador, there is talk of uh, maybe negotiations between Taiwan and the EU of trade and economic agreements. Would this be a red line if those agreements were negotiated and even concluded? We are opposed to any country or group of countries with diplomatic relations with us having official relations with the authorities in Taiwan. So if this happens, this would be a red line for you? We are against the Taiwanese authorities undertaking actions that undermine the relations between the EU and China. Ambassador Lu Shai, thank you very much for appearing on the France 24 interview and thank you all for watching it. Stay tuned for more news.